It was the day after Thanksgiving. You know, I was about to leave because my mother and I had just not had a good visit at all. Um, and so I go to this Allsips and I get in line behind this man and this man is just making a scene because um, he doesn't have enough money to buy the things that are on the counter. I pull it out and I, you know, tap him on the phone, I'm like, here, take this. And um, he turns around and I realize that it is a man that my mother had stayed with, or that had stayed with us for um, quite, a, quite a long time. Of all the, the men that my mother would bring into our house, um, he was probably the most vicious when it came to the abuse. I remember you know, being left you know, on the bathroom floor just bloodied and um, I stayed there that entire night because my mom just had no power against him whatsoever. Um, and I realized that that was this man. He was standing in front of me, this man that I never thought that I would see again. I had been able to release a lot of that anger, but I, I realized that in that moment, um, especially at that time in my life, um, that I had been using it just, just a little bit to justify to myself why I was the way I was. I felt the Lord pull at my heart and he said, I, I really need you to let go of this. Because if you don't, I can't take you where I want to take you. But in order to do that, you're going to have to forgive this man. You're going to have to let it go, and you're going to have to forgive him, and then you're going to have to give it to me and never take it back. And this, this exchange only happened in like a split second. But I remembered pulling away from that. It's like, I can't do that. Like, were you not there in our house when all this was going on? Like, half of the scars on my body are from this man. What are you talking about? I can't do that. In chapter 4 of Jonah, um, God asks Jonah a question after he's angry and mad that God saved Nineveh. He asks him a question, and he asked me the same question. He says, do you have a right to be angry about this. It kind of connected for me a little bit. Um, that Up until that point in my life, I had not realized that everything that had happened to me, um, all the good things in my life at that time, like my relationship with my dad, um, the friends that I have now, um, my, my best friend, the church family that I was given, the, the support that I find here at the Alumni Center and through Cal Farley's, um, the connections that I have with some of the rest of my family, um, all these things that I at one point did not have, that I was blessed with, that God had graciously given me, I could not have had them had I not gone through what I had gone through as a child. All of these wonderful, bright, and beautiful things in my life had to be born out of that darkness. There were just so many things that were connected all the way back to what I had been through that I had not realized just how interconnected they were. I understood why I was being asked that question. Do you have a right to be angry? And. The hardest part of that was realizing that my answer was no. Um, I had been given too much and blessed with too much. My greatest hurt ended up being the platform for my faith, for my relationship for God, with God, and for my relationship with others. Um, and I, I gave that man that money, which ended up being $7.54. And um, he didn't recognize who I was. He um, just took the money, paid for his stuff, and he, and he walked right out the door. $7.54 for me means that my testimony has a purpose. Um, it means that, you know, the forgiveness that Jesus gave us on the cross is so much more than the forgiveness that I gave that man in order for me to take hold of my future and to take hold of the plans that God has for me.
I cannot be stuck in that past. It happened, um, I can't change that. But I am not what happened to me. I'm who I choose to be.